Hello and welcome to this little video demonstration dedicated to the Sony Alpha 99 II. Um, I've been very curious before getting this camera to find out some details. In the end, I couldn't find out some of the specifics that I'm going to show you today. I bought the camera anyway, I'm very happy with it. So, well, this gives me the chance to show you some of these questions that I had before. What area are these questions in? Well, HDR photography and uh, or panoramic photography. Uh, I myself am a panoramic photographer. I have a website called panoguru.com uh, where I also um, post a whole bunch of tutorials, answer your questions and so on. And uh, you can also hire me if you if you want, uh, if you need some consulting. But anyway, uh, what was it I was going to show today? Well, let's start off with some bracketing options. There seemed to be a little bit of confusion here. There's a DP review post where people were unsure about uh, what options there were. Um, it's even listed wrongly on the uh, Dixon page for the for the camera. And um, well, traditionally with the Sony, we unfortunately never could select the number of frames and the step size separately. Uh, we were always stuck to a list of given pre-selected pre combinations of uh, step size and number of frames. But fortunately, from going from the Alpha 99 to the Alpha 99 II, uh, this list has been expanded. And uh, I'll show you quickly, because seeing is believing, um, what that looks like. So here's a video that I recorded from the back of the camera and uh, there's the option there and we start by just going through them. You can see there's a third of a stop up to nine images, half a stop up to nine images, two thirds of a stop up to nine images and up to one EV you can get nine images. After that two EVs or three EVs you can only take three or five images. But fret not, that is actually quite a large step size um, you can cover with this. Um, I'll show you this a little bit later with my uh, bracketing calculator. But here comes number two that I wanted to show you first. And that's regarding to the bracketing delay. Uh, at the Alpha 99, you could either set the camera on like a two second self timer or uh, to continuous bracketing, but you could not do both. And if you were out and about without a remote control, you usually will run into problems that you couldn't get your pixel perfect alignment without touching the camera because if you press the shutter with your finger, you obviously move the camera. Well, thankfully with the Alpha 99, there is a new option there that you can actually set a bracketing delay. So if we go into the bracket settings menu, you actually have a self timer during bracket. You can set that to two, five or 10 seconds. And for the demonstration here, I'm setting this to two. Then we'll go into drive mode, continuous bracketing and uh, we're all set. So if I push the release button now, you see there's a two second delay and the camera can settle down and then it takes those bracket shots. So that's wonderful. I'm very glad that they implemented this. I'm not sure when this came in. I went from the Alpha 99 to the Alpha 99 II. Maybe the 77 already had this. I don't know. I don't care. I'm very happy that it's there now. Um, yeah. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is what I could possibly call super bracketing. Um, now that you have a slightly larger step size there, if we um, take, for instance, five shots and we took a three EV step size, you can see we're already covering 12 EVs. So this here is a little calculator hobby thing that I made a while ago. And there's essentially, it allows you to just pre-visualize what a different um, reckoning options would result in. So the first row tells you how many shots you have in a bracket, if that's three, five or nine or even more. But if we take in this case five, for instance, we have a step size of one EV. So around the center exposure, which is shown here, and then you can drag left and right with this thing, you can see that these will be the exposure times that you'd be getting. And at the top, you can see that at the moment we're covering four EVs. Well, with the new settings in the camera, oh, by the way, and the third row here is a number of sets. So if you were to take two sets, um, you could space them like that and you can see the total range covered if you take two or more uh, sets or even three. Well, what do I want to say about uh, super bracketing? Well, with super bracketing, if we set the camera to, for instance, five shots and a step size of two, and we'll take just one set, well, we can cover this much about about eight EVs. And this is already larger than uh, we could do with the Alpha 99. In fact, you can actually set it to three EVs. And this is what we could get without changing the exposure between uh, bracketing sets. So this is actually a very large range covered. You're going from like four second exposure all the way to a thousand, one thousandth of a second of an exposure. But um, some HDR photographers say that would be way too large a step size. So if we bring this down to two steps, we're still covering eight EV, but 
well, you probably want a little bit more. So if I now take two sets, uh, this actually works out quite nicely because what you can see, if we take five shots uh, with two EVs apart and we take two sets of them and we center those sets around two second exposure and a five hundredth of a second, we're actually covering the entire range from a full 30 second exposure to one eight thousandth uh, of a second of an exposure. So it's the entire range that the camera can do if we leave Bulb out of this for a moment. Um, so how can you actually get this working? Well, you can take one set, a two second exposure, and then another set of a 500th, but you would be moving the camera when you adjust the center exposure. Well, thankfully with the Alpha 99 now, you have a remote app. And with the remote app, you can actually change the exposure. This is just a demonstration. So here I am centered around a 500th of a second. And now I use the remote app, which is shown here on the right, that's from my cell phone. I'll change the shutter speed to two second and then I can trigger another set of um, exposures and they take obviously a lot longer as you can see. I'll actually spare the agony of weight. But as you can see, I'm, I'm collecting all these uh, exposures. So it's five plus five, it's so a total of 10 exposures in the end. And you're actually moving all the way through the exposure range. And um, yeah, so you get a super, <laughs> super bracketing exposure. And the beauty is by using the camera remote app with your smartphone, you don't actually move the camera and you still get picture perfect alignment between the frames. Of course, it assumes a static scene, etc. But you no longer have to touch the camera in order to change the exposure. So that's pretty nice. Um, the fourth thing I wanted to show today is the remote app. Again, there was seemed to have been very little video on the net um, when I was looking to see what what does this remote app actually do. Well, here's a little uh, run through. First, I'll show you how to pair this. So I've already went through the initial setup step where with the Play Memories app, you scan this uh, VR, um, what's it called? QR code there, loads a profile into your, into your phone, and then you can connect to the uh, wireless network created by the camera automatically without entering a password. Um, and that's pretty nifty. But anyway, once you, won, once you went through the uh, setup process, the two are paired now, then I'll switch back to the Play Memories mobile app and you can see it detects that you're in remote control mode. And there we go, now we can remote control the camera. So you can change the shutter speed. Um, as you can see, this is actually pretty responsive, I have to say. Uh, so these two recordings are, are synchronized. Um, you can change the aperture. So here I am in, in full manual mode, so that's why I can change all these settings. You can change the ISO. Um, you, can you can then also change the white balance. Uh, you can change the uh, display. Uh, to show you the full screen or not. And you have a bunch of quite simple settings there. For instance, this grid that's overlaid at the top right there, um, you can toggle that off if you want. There's not so much else you can change really. I mean, you can't change some of the deeper things that you would go have to go through the menu mode. And even if you went ahead and I think if you change the drive mode from bracketing to uh, single frame mode, for instance, I think you would actually lose the, the connection to the remote app, which is a bit, well, it's a bit annoying, but if you know what you want to do ahead of time, you can configure a camera you want, and then you connect with the remote, and then you can change some of these um, essential settings and sort of get this super perfect, uh, um, pixel perfect, super bracketing, or whatever you want to call it, uh, again, without having to touch the camera. This might be not a big deal for a lot of other people from other manufacturers, but for us uh, Sony shooters, this actually is a pretty big deal, especially on the A mount. Another thing I wanted to show is the location linkage. As you know, the camera no longer has a GPE, uh, GP, GPS um, receiver built into it, but instead you're supposed to use your smartphone with Bluetooth um, connected to the camera. This actually works surprisingly well. And the amazing thing is it works extremely quickly. So if we look at this, here's a demo. This is where it turns on, where um, you can see if it captures the um, connection there. and it's about 4.4 seconds you get from turning the camera on to having your GPS fix uh, stored in the camera. So if, if I take a photo there, it'll have the correct GPS coordinates in it. Well, as correct as my cell phone provides um, the data. But anyway, that's like four and a half seconds. I think that's a lot faster than with the built-in GPS. Plus modern day people that we are, we have our smartphones with us anyway. So this seems to work surprisingly well. And Given that, given that it's a Bluetooth connection, it also, I think it's pretty low, low energy and it, it turns off when you turn the camera off. So yeah, it's maybe it's a shame that you don't have it built in anymore. But on the other hand, my smartphone tends to have a lot more accurate GPS reception and a much quicker um, 
reaps it in GPS connection and even works kind of indoors, right? Which would never work with the camera because it just relies on GPS. So that works, as I said, surprisingly well. Um, the last thing that I wanted to show you here is uh, the steady shot options. You, that's a new one also in the Alpha uh, series for me anyway. Maybe it was there in the 77, as I said, I don't know. But going from the Alpha 99 to the Alpha 99 2, this is new for me. And it's quite nice because some panoramic photographers would use manual lenses like Samyangs and so on that don't actually convey uh, the focal length information. Well, the good thing is here you can actually manually set the focal length and um, to make it fit with your lens. So that's pretty nifty, or you can set it back to automatic and then it'll try to figure out the focal length for the steady shot um, based on the information transmitted by the lens. Uh, that's essentially it, what I wanted to show you today. Uh, very specific to the specific camera model. So maybe it's relevant to you. Maybe you're interested in buying this camera. Maybe you're not interested in buying the camera, whatever it is. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and it answers some of the questions that you might have had. So thanks very much for your attention. And um, yeah, do check out some of my tutorials uh, if you want. There's actually quite a few things on panoramic photography and a little bit of HDR also. So yeah, have a look at that. Thanks very much. Bye.